Hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today we're going to continue exploring the different resiliency modes that we can do with Azure Virtual Machines. Um, last time we looked at fault domains and zones and setting those explicitly on the individual VM and then going and checking those values using the IMDS service from within the virtual machine itself. Today, um, we are going to be looking at availability sets, which is a critical service that enables us to associate virtual machines that are performing the same function that we want to tie together from a fault tolerance standpoint and basically inform the Azure platform, hey, all these VMs are kind of working together. So it would really be bad if a whole bunch of them all went down at the same time. It's basically what we're going to say. So first thing I got to do is I got to go modify my solution to have more than one VM. Um, and then I'm going to add an availability set and associate that with all the VMs. So without further ado, let's get started. So I still, I'm still working with a lot of my keep it simple, stupid modules. I got my network, I got my key vault. Um, you know, all that, all that stuff is in there that, you know, the usual suspects are there. Um, and I've got my, I've got my module here now, uh, in this case, uh, you know, I just have a single module, you know, and, and that's probably okay. Um, for starters, you know, but it makes a lot more sense, especially when you're working with availability sets, you're going to be working with more than one VM because that, that's kind of the point of an availability set, that there are two or more virtual machines that are kind of doing the same thing and you want them to be fault tolerant. So um, yeah, so let's go, let's go look at the availability set resource, first of all. And this is one of the simplest resources there is. I mean, just look at this thing. Um, there's not a lot going on. Um, so I'm just gonna go snag this, copy pasta. You know, that's a common thing people do these days. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what the actual naming convention is. I think it's, I think it's avail. Yeah, avail. I was right. Why do we even look stiff up on the internet? You know, I just, my instincts are good. So there we go. I'm just going to use the random string in there. I hope I can use a hyphen, um, you know, it's hard to remember if what, what services like hyphens versus don't like hyphens. So we're just going to rock that for the time being. I like hyphens in names cause it just makes it a little bit easier to see, um, you know, the different components of an, of, of resources name. Um, and my name, my naming conventions are usually kind of, so we're just going to add this availability set. My naming conventions are usually kind of, um, composite, meaning I take uh, a couple of different token, like parts, segments, as you will. There we go. Okay, so we do have an availability set that we're adding. We're not adding any uh, virtual machines to that yet. So we're just going to provision it and see what happens. Um, it is a pretty quick one to provision. Okay, there we go. So this thing should be out there. Let's go back to our resource group and take a gander and starts with an A. So it should be at the top of the list. Might take, might take some time. Um, so all that, while that's, while it's taken some time, let's go look at how we can modify our module to support availability sets. Cause I'm pretty sure that my baseline virtual machine module doesn't support availability sets. Um, I can easily go look at that. I, see, I take in VM scale sets, which I do work with quite a bit. And then I take in a proximity placement group, which I don't work with too, too much, but it's, it's, uh, it's come up enough that I, and it's super easy to add it that I just decided to add it. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I see availability set, um, as an option here. So we're just going to go and add that. It's going to be a, um, it's going to default to null. It is an ID. It is a type of string. Um, we don't anticipate people to set it very often. So we're going to set it to null and on the main resource. Um, surely there is going to be an attribute called availability set that goes by the same name. I grab the var value and I set it. 
Now, if that thing is, if that thing is null, then, then, um, then no harm, no foul, right? But if it's set, then we're going to associate it. Now, I, I, this is a module that I maintain publicly, so I have to go add this um, capability here. A few moments later. Now that should allow me to use version 19 of my module um, in the other project. So this is the code base for my module library. I just made an update to my shared module. Um, I did it pretty hacky, you know, um, typically like you would probably want to have a sample <laughs> where, where you develop, um, you know, a test for this change or something like that. But I'm, I'm flying pretty uh, fast and loose here. Uh, so we're just going to do that and we're going to hope for the best. So right here, I need to run Terraform init to bring in the version 19 of that module. And you know, it's a good day on the Terraform module registry because it seems like it already pulled that value for us. Um, now, remember the availability set is not a required, remember the availability set is not a required um, attribute. So the fact that I don't set it really doesn't mean anything. Um, we're just not, we're just setting it to null by default, but I do want to add it and it is a set ID and we have an Azure RM availability set. I think it's called main and then just the ID for that thing. And now this is when we start exercising the new capability of that module to be able to associate this VM to that availability set. So, uh, but interestingly, it does force a replacement, uh, which I totally glossed over. Um, yeah, interesting. So, in, but however, let's see what is actually causing the replacement. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yes, the availability set ID changing force that replacement. See, I saw, I saw all these other little red dashes here, minuses here. And I was like, Hmm, I didn't change encryption at host enabled and I didn't change the tags or secure boot enabled. So, but these are just like changes like we're Azure probably adds in, adds these as default values. And because our code doesn't specify them, the it's null. Right. Um, and so this is kind of reiterating back to Azure. Um, Hey, the code actually says this is null. It did, doesn't say that this is false. I wonder if this is actually, these are actually like, is this like a bug in the provider? Um, Cause this kind of feels like unnecessary churn, you know, like I should have a clean plan at this point. Cause um, aside from changing the availability set didn't really change anything. So maybe, maybe those, all those little nitpicks probably got picked up because I'm actually replacing uh, the resource due to the availability set change. That would be my guess. So right now we're destroying the old VM and we'll be uh, creating the new one in the availability set. Let's go see if that availability set ever even showed up in a resource group. And it did, it did, wonderful. So now the new version of this VM is gonna show up in this availability set, which probably doesn't have anything in it right now. Nope, yeah. So we just gotta wait for this thing to destroy and then come back. Okay, it's destroyed, and now we're gonna be creating the new VM. A few moments later. There we go. So I've got my VM provisioned. Um, it is in the availability set, so I can go look at that. And I can go look at the availability set, and I can go see the VM in it, and we're happy. And it's in fault domain zero, fault domain zero and update domain zero. Um, now, this is not super exciting because availability sets, again, are designed to distribute across fault domains, which is not happening here because we're only in one fault domain. So what do we got to do? Well, um, you know, I could uh, I could go use a for each and create a bunch of these. Uh, but I'm too lazy, so I'm just going to set the count to, I don't know, let's do three. And then I'm going to change uh, this from the, uh, just a hard-coded thing, and I'm just going to use count.index. And let me just make sure all the other things should be okay. Yeah, I don't, I think we're all set. Now, yeah, so some of my outputs are J 
jacked because uh, it was assuming that that was a uh, single item. So I don't know, what should I use a splat here? And let's just splat that. Yep, there we go. So <laughs> yeah, not, not super exciting uh, array outputs, but you know, uh, uh, we, we already established that the fault domain output was pretty much worthless. It's just a negative one anyway. So um, yeah, let's let's see how this goes. We're, we should be drop creating. Uh, we're gonna delete that VM again, then create three more VMs. Should have enough quota. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, so we'll destroy first um, and then we're good to go. A few moments later. Okay, so we got that VM deleted and we got three three in the creation process. A few moments later. Oh, that's fun. Two string null. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we got three VMs created. Let's go pop in the portal. Um, they should be added here. Uh, is there no like refresh button in here? Okay, I guess you gotta do the d double click uh, refresh. And there we go. So we got three VMs and they're spread across uh, three fault domains, um, zero, one, two. I mean, that's essentially what an availability set does is it distributes your virtual machines evenly across the fault domains of an Azure region. Um, this is uh, in contrast to availability zone uh, based uh, resiliency where um, you, you would just, you know, distribute your virtual machines across availability zones evenly. So. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we've got, uh, you know, we, we, mo I'm, so what do we do? We, we modified my module, um, to take in an additional attribute for the availability set, set ID. Um, and we followed the module release cycle for that. My very, very mature and well-disciplined module release cycle, <laughs> um, push tag, uh, open, open and close a rubber stamp pull request, um, and start using the new version. <laughs> yeah, that's very sophisticated. Uh, we're going to get better, you know, um, I'm going to get better. I'm going to try and infuse some, some better discipline into my module, to, into my module libraries, but they are keep it simple, stupid modules guys. So, I mean, it's not like there's an SLA or anything, you know, just, uh, helping you, uh, kick the tires a little bit quicker, um, in your Azure projects. So. Anyways, but we did add the availability set. So if you want to go mess around with availability sets, you're all set to do that. No pun intended. Um, and we also like demonstrated uh, module uh, resource interchange here, right? Like you don't have to make everything a module. Like uh, I've, I've actually run into people that are like, once you add one module block, like every, you, you, you're not allowed to have resource blocks. I'm like, what? No, the whole point of, of Terraform and HashiCorp configuration language is that you can mash these things up together. Um, so don't feel like you have to go create modules just because you know you, somebody's OCD and they don't wanna see resources next to modules, right? Uh, think about what a module would look like for this kind of, uh, for an availability set. I mean, it would be, it would be pointless. Like it would be what I call um, a resource wrapper module, like it just, pass in the inputs and set them on the resource block and call it a day. Um, very, very low value. So just when, when you're working with simple resources, just leave them as resources and mash them up against your module. That's actually doing something interesting. Um, which in this case, I'm, this is my template for just provisioning, a you know, kind of a simple Linux virtual machine on a private network. Um, that's pretty much it. So, and, and I have a couple of different modes, right. To configure the resiliency, um, availability set is the new one that we just added today. So that's fun. Um, next time we'll be looking at VM scale sets. Um, and there's actually two, uh, types of resources that we need to look at for VM scale sets. Um, and we'll get into that, uh, next time. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this availability sets. Um, you know, pretty simple. If you're, if you need to provision, um, loose VMs, you know, maybe you've got kind of a manual setup right now where you have to use, uh, virtual machines that you configure yourself. 
um, and you just want to throw them out there, um, availability set is a great way to do that. Um, if you're if you haven't if you're not in an AZ enabled region, you know that's that's a good resiliency path. Uh, but you should also be considering um, AZ based resiliency. So um, you know consider explicitly setting the the availability zone attribute um, on the VM itself, um, and then just distributing your VMs uh, evenly across AZs. And I'll uh, be doing a video on that in this series uh, upcoming as well. So. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, until next time, this is the Azure Terraformer signing off.